Stacy Johnson pushed the gaily wrapped gift across the plush carpeted floor to her husband Jack. Go ahead, honey, open it, she said excitedly. Jack and Stacy were sitting cross-legged on their living room floor. Behind them, in front of the picture window that overlooked their neighbor's snow-covered driveway was a large, gaily decorated Christmas tree. Stacy had already opened one of her gifts, an elegant floor-length pale blue nightgown from Jack. It was too sheer to wear until summer, but it was beautiful just the same. And now, it was Jack's turn to open his gift. Go ahead, honey open it, Stacy repeated. She was wearing her little I've got a wonderful surprise for you dear, smile. Jack tore his eyes away from the brightly wrapped Christmas gift and looked into his wife's big green eyes. There was a shine in them that he hadn't seen in months. He sighed mentally, wondering what was in store for him this time. He dearly loved his wife, but she could come up with some of the damnedest, most god-awful offbeat ideas for gifts at times. Returning his attention to the gift, which he hadn't touched yet, Jack tried to guess what was in it. It wasn't very large, about the same size as a box of Jack's favorite brand of cigars, the really good ones, grown from real Cuban seed stock broadleaf tobacco in El Paso, Texas. Machine made, of course, none of that shoddy hand-wrapped stuff. Open it, dear, Stacy repeated excitedly. She was obviously growing more eager for him to open the gift the longer he took. Sighing, Jack picked up the package and mentally waited as he followed the time-honored tradition of gently shaking it to see if the contents rattled. It didn't and the package was a little too heavy for the cigars he thought it had contained. What is it? Jack asked, making no attempt to open the gift. Something you've always wanted, honey. Something that I've always wanted? Jack looked speculatively at the package. Ever since I was a kid about the only thing I've always wanted for Christmas and never got was a new bicycle. Got one for my birthday once though, but never one for Christmas. It's not a bicycle, Stacy said firmly, interrupting Jack's reminiscing. He weighed the package in his hand again and glanced at Stacy out of the corner of his eye. He wondered if she realized that he was just playing with her. No, not big enough for a bicycle, Jack said thoughtfully, as though he hadn't heard her comment. I know, it's the keys to a new 54-foot Grand Banks trawler. The blank look on Stacy's face prompted Jack to expand on his guess. It's a type of boat, dear. A very, very nice boat. No, it's not the keys to a new boat. And why would you want a boat? We live 500 miles from the nearest lake, Stacy asked with puzzled smile on her face. Oh, I don't know, just thought it might be kind of nice to own a boat someday, Jack sighed. Well, it's not a boat. Stacy's smile grew a little impatient. Now, would you please open it? Jack stared at his wife for a second, the slightly irritated tone in her voice told him that playtime was over for now. He nodded and pulled at the hand-tied bow. The bright pink ribbon fell away on the first tug. All pretense of containing his curiosity gone, he tore away the wrappings to uncover a wooden box. Obviously handmade by a master craftsman from solid rosewood, its highly polished surfaces showed some signs of wear but appeared solid and well cared for. In the exact center of the lid was a carved bar relief of a woman in a kneeling position facing forward. The woman's hands were resting on her thighs, palms upwards as though she were cradling an invisible object. While the relief showed a little more wear than the rest of the box, it was obvious, even at a glance, that the young woman was well endowed and quite naked. Around the edges of the lid was an ornate and intricate rope-like inlay made of ivory and silver filigree. It took him a full five seconds to recognize it for what it was. An antique cigar humidor. Jack glanced up at his wife in surprise. The gift wasn't quite what he had expected, but he loved it anyway. It's beautiful, honey. Where did you find it? In an antique store, darling. But the box is only part of the gift, dear, look inside. Jack didn't know what to expect when he opened the carved and inlaid box, perhaps some antique cufflinks, maybe even what he had thought the gift had been in the first place, a supply of cigars. Whatever he had been expecting this time wasn't what he found either. Lying end to end nestled in shallow accordion folds made of a sheet of thin cardboard were alternating rows of dark blue and pink capsules. 
The shallow depth of the layer of capsules suggested that there were other layers underneath the top one. Jack took a quick count of the number of capsules, there were 25 of each color, if there were at least 4 trays that would make 200 capsules in all. Jack took one of the capsules out of its resting place and inspected it closely. Except for its unusual color, a shiny pink, the randomly selected capsule looked like an ordinary vitamin pill. What are they? They're sex aids, honey. They're supposed to act like an aphrodisiac, to increase our enjoyment of sex by double or more. Don't worry, they're perfectly safe, Stacy quickly added when she saw the odd expression on Jack's face. Safe? The thought that Stacy would intentionally buy anything that would be harmful never crossed his mind until she mentioned it. Here, I'll show you, Stacy said taking the pink capsule from Jack's fingers and popping it into her mouth before he could react. Jack's mouth dropped open as he watched his wife swallow the capsule. What are you doing? He asked in alarm. There could have been anything inside of those capsules. Proving to you that I'm not trying to poison you, Stacy said with a wink. She took one of the dark blue capsules out of its grove and handed it to her husband. Go ahead, try one. Jack regarded his wife for a second, weighing the small dark blue capsule in his hand. Shaking his head, he replaced it in the box, took one of the pink ones and popped it into his mouth. I like the pink ones better. An odd look crossed Stacy's face as she watched her husband swallow the capsule. Ah, uh, dear. I should have told you a little more about these before you took one. The aphrodisiacs are gender-specific. The blue ones work only on men and the pink only on women. According to the old woman who gave me these, if you take a capsule intended for the other sex, there will be dire consequences. Dire consequences? What kind of consequences? Jack asked, suddenly worried. Stacy bit her lower lip as she frowned. I'm not sure, I think she said something about losing your sex drive. What? Lose it? How? Jack asked suddenly worried. Well, she didn't exactly say lose it, she said that it would be difficult, if not impossible to have sex. And just what does that mean? Jack demanded. Stacy bit her lower lip again. I, I'm not really sure. Honey, tell me more about this antique store where you got these things, Jack said. The tone in his voice was as serious as the look on his face. It was just a little store a couple of blocks from where I work, two doors down from the deli. Jill and I had eaten lunch at the deli as usual. The service was a little faster than normal and we had a few minutes to kill before we had to go back to work. Jack winced at the word kill. We decided to go to the antique store to do some shopping for Christmas. We had looked in the windows a number of times before and decided to check it out. And? We went in and I found the box with the capsules. Stacy was beginning to look even more worried than her husband. The old woman, the owner of the store, told me that the capsules were the last of a supply she'd received from an old friend in Romania. Romania? She didn't say exactly where in Romania, did she? Jack asked suspiciously. Stacy shook her head, bewildered by her husband's question. No, why? Because, Romania or Transylvania, as it was once called, is where the Count Dracula legend was supposed to have originated. Stacy paled as the impact of what her husband was implying hit her. You don't think these things are going to turn us into werewolves, do you? She gasped. Jack absently shook his head, deep in thought. Wrong legend, it's vampires, darling. Count Dracula was supposed to have been a vampire. Oh, my God, Stacy whispered. Jack, I'm sorry. I never should have bought this damned thing. Well, it's too late now, I guess, Jack said more calmly than he felt. Jack had no idea what the future had in store for either Stacy or himself because of the capsules they had so stupidly swallowed. He didn't seriously think that either he or Stacy would turn into vampires, although a horrible death by poison was a strong possibility. He gently rubbed his stomach, which suddenly seemed to be quite full and churning even though his last meal had been several hours before. At the very least, he would end up with a bad case of indigestion, he decided. He burped quietly and felt a little better. After his discreet burp, his stomach started to settle down. 
Although, if you had asked him, Jack would have sworn that he could actually feel the capsule as it traveled its merry way down through his digestive tract. He would have even told you that it felt as though it had lodged somewhere inside of him about level with his navel. Stacy and Jack looked at each other expectantly. The tension grew until suddenly Jack belched again. This time it was long and loud. Jack! Shame on you! Stacy said teasingly. That was terrible. Jack shook his head, chagrined. It may have sounded terrible, but man, did it feel good. How are you feeling? Stacy looked thoughtful for a second. The truth? Jack nodded. A little horny. I could almost jump your bod right this instant. Stacy giggled and reached for another gift. Jack stared at his wife, wondering if she was just pretending. For someone who had just said she was horny enough to jump his bod, she sure wasn't acting like it. Almost? Jack asked raising an eyebrow. Almost, Stacy confirmed, then sighed disappointedly, but I've decided that I'll just have to force myself to wait until we unwrap the rest of our gifts. And then? Jack asked hopefully. And then we've got to go to Mom's for Christmas dinner, and you know how much she likes to talk, so you can figure on at least four or five hours more with her. Jack eyed the large pile of gifts under the tree, then up at his wife's lush body and sighed. He guessed he could wait a while longer, not that he had any choice in the matter. It was actually quite a bit later when Jack and Stacy crawled into bed. Stacy's promise of sex was not on Jack's mind, however. I really wish your mother would learn how to cook a turkey properly, Jack complained, rubbing his slightly bloated stomach. And just what was wrong with mom's turkey this time? Stacy sighed tiredly. I thought it was all right. It was an old argument between them. Stacy's mother was a wonderful person, but like some women who have chosen careers over homemaking, she'd barely progressed beyond the most rudimentary of skills in the culinary arts. Stacy was well aware of that fact, having managed to somehow survive both her childhood and her mother's cooking. There was no real mystery to her survival, however, years of consuming her mother's cooking had made Stacy more or less immune, or at least accustomed, to her mother's sometimes indigestible food. Jack's mother, on the other hand, prided herself on the excellent meals she prepared for her family. He had a long ways to go to develop even a fraction of Stacy's cast iron stomach. Well, for one thing, it was a little undercooked in the dressing, well, it just seems to be just sitting in a big undigested lump, he pointed to his stomach, right here. Well, I thought it was all right, Stacy said defensively. Are you sure it was the turkey and not something else you ate? Jack burped gently, it did not help. Couldn't have been anything else, he replied. Jack hadn't been entirely truthful with Stacy. He'd actually been suffering from a mild case of indigestion since he'd swallowed the pink capsule. While that had been bad enough, it hadn't been anything compared to what the partially raw turkey had done to him. At the moment, Jack also had a headache severe enough to say to Stacy, not tonight, dear, and mean it. In fact, he ached all over, felt nauseous and had broken out in a cold sweat, all the classic signs of a mild case of food poisoning. Stacy, while disappointed, said she understood and rolled over and promptly went to sleep. Jack lay motionless staring up at the ceiling, knowing that if he even so much as blinked an eye, he would be racing toward the bathroom and an unwanted date with the toilet. As sick as he felt, it was overshadowed with his growing aggravation toward Stacy's idea of a gift. How dare she waste her money on those capsules? Improve our sex life indeed. I am perfectly satisfied with our sex life as it is. Stacy is the one that always wants to try something new and different, not me. Granted, a few, but only a very few, of her fantasies have been fun. Most have been either entirely unsatisfactory in the end results, like the time she shaved all my pubic hair off, or truly embarrassing, like the time she… Well, I want to forget that time entirely. We'll never be able to go back there again. More than few of her ideas have been outright bizarre and some have been downright painful, like those strange rubber ring-like objects that look like miniature dog collars with spikes. Stacy insisted I wear a couple of them on my penis that night a few months ago when we made love in the back seat of the car. French ticklers, I think Stacy had called them. Ticklers indeed! 
The only difference in sensation, at least as far as I'm concerned, was the sudden pain when my pubic hair had somehow become tangled around the infernal device when she pulled them off of me. She must have pulled a couple of dozen hair out by the ritzel. She said she was sorry, but it never would have happened if she hadn't been experimenting with our sex lives again. No, I'm perfectly satisfied with our love life as it is. After all, it isn't as if there's anything wrong with the traditional missionary position, is there? It's the time-honored and classic method of making love, isn't it? And I do all the work, don't I? All Stacy has to do is lay back and enjoy the ride. So what's wrong with that? Nothing. I really wish Stacy was a little more conservative in acting out her sex fantasies. Fantasies, hmm. Jack smiled ruefully to himself in the darkness. Now, if Stacy really wanted to increase my enjoyment during sex, then she'd let me wear the nightgown once in a while. The problem with that thought was that Stacy had no idea that Jack harbored a secret fetish about wearing women's undergarments. Usually it was nothing more than a pair of panties, but occasionally other items such as a nightgown as well. Jack had worn women's panties in secret for as long as he could remember. Over the years, he'd bought and worn dozens of pairs of panties, only to throw them away a few weeks later when his guilt had caught up with his desires. That is, he had worn them until he'd married Stacy. The day before the wedding he'd thrown away his small supply of silky panties, vowing never again to wear women's clothing. A few months after the wedding however, Jack had the overpowering urge to wear a pair of panties again. He could have worn Stacy's, except she was a size larger and he'd never felt really comfortable wearing someone else's clothing even when it was acceptable to do so. Hating himself, he secretly bought a few pair, wearing them only when he knew Stacy wouldn't find out. Which, unfortunately for Jack, wasn't as frequent as he would have liked. Out of guilt and frustration he'd thrown out his last two pair of panties only a few days before Christmas. He was starting to feel the familiar love-slash-hate urge to wear a pair of panties again. Suddenly finding himself mentally wandering off on that particular track, Jack began to think about how he would go about replacing his secret stash of panties this time. It was after Christmas, so he couldn't use that excuse to wander the aisles of the lingerie section until early February for Valentine's Day. He didn't think the mystical call of the feel of sheer nylon panties would allow him to wait that long. No, he sighed to himself, it was mail order time again. Several hours later, a still wide awake Jack had a stroke of genius. It was an idea that if it worked, would enable him to wear panties any time he wanted. The more I think about it, the more it sounds as though it'd work. If I'm careful how I go about it, it will work. Do I have the guts to try it? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Jack, you sly old dog, you've got nothing to lose but your boxers. Go for it. Besides, even if it doesn't totally work out the way I'd like, it might cure Stacy of her wild ideas about having to have some kind of weird gizmo or other to improve our sex life. Now that just might be worth all the potential embarrassment. Forgetting all about his indigestion, Jack smiled to himself, rolled over and fell instantly asleep. Jack! What on earth are you doing? Stacy demanded the next morning. Jack looked up at his wife in surprise. It was pretty obvious to anyone who cared to look what he was doing, he was getting dressed after his morning shower. Getting dressed, Jack stated the obvious, why? What's wrong with that? Stacy gave her husband a hard look, a little disgusted by the sarcastic tone in his voice. Nothing. What I meant was, what are you doing wearing a pair of my panties? Jack glanced down at the one size too large, pink nylon panty briefs he was wearing. His surprised expression implied he was seeing them for the first time. Ah, uh, I don't know. I just got this sudden overwhelming urge to put them on when I was in the shower, he said, acting as though he was a little bewildered by the idea himself. Well, you can just take them off right now. I was going to wear that pair today. Stacy added sounding very annoyed. Sorry, I didn't know. Jack shrugged his shoulders and pulled the panties off. Stark naked, he handed his wife the soft undergarment. Saying not a word, Stacy snatched the panties from Jack's hand. 
holding them with two fingers at arm's length as though they were something repulsive, she walked into the bathroom and dropped them into the dirty clothes hamper. When she returned to the bedroom she discovered Jack wearing another pair of her panties, a pair of black satin French cut briefs. Now don't tell me that you were going to wear these too, Jack said when he noticed Stacy staring at him in astonishment. Stacy numbly shook her head, not knowing what to say. Good, then I can wear them. Jack, what in the world is the matter with you? Stacy asked as Jack pulled on his jeans and zipped up the fly. What do you mean? Jack asked innocently, as though there was nothing particularly wrong or unusual about him wearing a pair of his wife's panties. Why did you put on another pair of my panties? Struggling hard to keep from breaking into a grin, Jack replied thoughtfully, I don't know. Hmm, let me see. Is it because it's more comfortable wearing a pair of panties under my jeans than not wearing any underwear at all? What? Stacy said incredulously. This time she didn't react to the sarcastic tone in Jack's voice. You have plenty of your own underwear. No, that's not it, not really. Jack tried to look even more thoughtful as he rubbed the seat of his jeans against the slick fabric of the panties. I guess it's really because they make me feel sexy. Those, he shuddered when he glanced at his closed underwear drawer, don't. Sexy? They do? Stacy's mouth dropped open and snapped shut a couple of times. Yes, they do. I really like the way they feel, Jack confirmed with a little more enthusiasm. I, uh, but, you, uh, Stacy stammered, growing more confused than annoyed by her husband's invasion of her lingerie drawer. A moment later her eyes narrowed as if she'd made up her mind about something repugnant. Never mind. Wear the damned things if you want to. I don't care. Although it was painfully obvious to Jack that she did care. Jack waited until he pulled his t-shirt half over his head before he allowed himself a small smile of victory. He'd planted the seed. If he worked it right, Stacy would think it was because of those damned capsules she tried to force on him for Christmas and therefore, her fault for trying to improve their sex life. After a week or so of wearing her panties, and dropping subtle hints about it being the fault of those damned capsules, he could safely buy some in his own size. After that, with any kind of luck at all, he'd be able to wear them any time he wanted. Payback could be such fun. At dinner that evening, Stacy brought up the subject of Jack wearing her panties again. Jack, can you give me any kind of reasonable explanation of just what you think you're doing? Jack paused, his fork halfway to his mouth. Doing about what? You know what? Wearing my panties, Stacy said. Why shouldn't I wear them? After all, they feel so soft and sexy next to my skin. Sexy. Jack. I'm really becoming worried about you. Men, real men, don't do things like that. You've never shown such bizarre behavior before, Stacy said quietly. Bizarre? What's so bizarre about wanting to wear something as soft and comfortable as a pair of nylon panties? After all, you wear them all the time and never think twice about it, Jack replied logically. It was not the answer Stacy wanted to hear but had been half expecting. She did her level best to keep from screaming at her husband. Her voice was tight with the effort as she replied, I wear them because I'm a female and females wear panties, men don't. Why not? Jack asked innocently. Because panties are designed to be worn by women, not men. That's why there's no fly. Furthermore, Stacy started, then snapped her mouth shut. A horrible thought had just occurred to her. Her eyes lost focus as she thought out loud about what she had said. By women, not men. No. It couldn't be. Unless. The capsule. Could it have? Jack smiled to himself, it was obvious that she had finally made the connection he had been trying to imply. He knew he had to proceed very carefully from this point on. Those capsules you gave me for Christmas? What do they have to do with me wanting to wear your panties? The pink capsule you took was intended for a woman and you took it. Jack saw the opening that he had hoped Stacy would provide. So? Wait a second. You can't seriously believe that the capsule is making me want to wear your panties, can you? Jack asked in very convincing astonishment. 
Stacy looked stunned for a second as Jack's suggestion sunk in. It hadn't been the most subtle suggestion he could have made, but Stacy didn't seem to notice he was leading her in the direction he wanted. Oh, my God, Stacy stammered. It I ask what's making you want to wear my panties. Bingo, Jack thought, suppressing a desire to grin. Stacy rushed around the table, threw her arms around her husband's neck and began crying. Oh, Jack, I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. I never should have bought that those capsules. Can you ever forgive me? Jack waited a few seconds before he put his arms around Stacy, hugging her close. That's all right, honey. It's all right. I don't mind wearing your panties, really I don't. Jack said softly. He truly loved Stacy and hated to lie to her, but enough was enough. Besides, he also truly loved wearing panties. His attempt to comfort Stacy had exactly the opposite effect, she began to cry harder. Feeling the wetness of her tears on his shoulder, Jack almost regretted pulling what was in reality a very dirty trick on his beloved wife. Almost. Time to dig it a little deeper, Jack thought. With difficulty, he gently pushed Stacy away, looked into her eyes and gave her a deep kiss. If it was the capsule, Jack trailed off, looking hopeful. Since I only took one, then shouldn't its effects wear off after a while? Stacy looked at her husband, wiped the tears from her cheek, sniffed and nodded. What else could it have been? You wouldn't want to wear my panties otherwise. I suppose it will wear off soon. At least, I hope so. But what if it doesn't, Jack? What if it doesn't? What do we do then? Jack tried to make his expression look as concerned as Stacy's. This is going even better than I planned, he thought. If it doesn't, well I guess that we'll just have to live with the fact that I'll like wearing your panties, although they don't fit very well, Jack said softly trying to sound brave about a seemingly horrible prospect he actually felt quite delighted about. When Stacy burst into tears again Jack knew he'd established the connection between the capsule and him wearing her panties. And he thought the part about them not fitting very well was a particularly convincing touch. Stacy and Jack stayed in their embrace for a long time before Stacy finally dried her eyes. Worn out by the exchange, they retired to their bedroom. Much to Stacy's surprise and pleasure, Jack performed quite well in spite of the panties he had been wearing. It never crossed her mind that Jack's gentle but exciting performance may have been because he had worn the silky garment. The next morning, Jack wordlessly selected and put on another pair of panties. Stacy merely bit her lower lip and silently looked away, fresh tears in her eyes. A week later, days before she should have, Stacy ran out of panties to wear. It was understandable, considering there were now two people wearing them. Stacy debated for nearly an hour before deciding that both she and Jack just couldn't continue to wear the same panties all the time. Since it didn't appear that the strange side effects of the pink capsule was wearing off, there was only one obvious solution of the problem until it did. She dressed, substituting a pair of pantyhose under her jeans for her normal undies. Jack, I'm going to run to the mall for an hour or so. Want to come with me? Jack glanced up from the box of ornaments he was removing from the Christmas tree and shook his head. Perhaps it was just as well, Stacy decided. The way Jack seemed to be reacting to wearing her panties, it would be a little awkward if he was turned loose in the lingerie department. Because she felt more than a little guilty about Jack's sudden change of preference in underwear, Stacy bought over two dozen pair of panties. Because she truly loved her husband, they were the softest, laciest, and sexiest she could find. Best of all, as far as Jack was concerned, they were in his correct size. When Stacy put Jack's new panties away in his underwear drawer, she had hesitated for a moment, weighing the consequences of what she doing. In the back of her mind, she half hoped that he wouldn't change his mind about wearing his new panties. It could get expensive if she had to replace all of Jack's underwear a second time. On the other hand, Jack hadn't shown any inclination of wanting to wear his old underwear any time soon. Making up her mind, she removed all of Jack's male undershorts and threw them in the trash. She had fully resigned herself to the idea Jack would be wearing panties all the time. The next morning Jack discovered the substitution of the panties for his old underwear and smiled to himself.
His trick was working better than he thought. Stacy had not only accepted the fact that he had to wear panties, she'd actually given him the excuse to wear them all the time. When Jack discovered the panties in his drawer he had been delighted, so much so that he almost confessed his trickery. Almost. For the next month or so, everything continued according to Jack's secret plan. Then a strange thing occurred, Jack no longer got the kick out of wearing the silky garments that he'd had when he first started his little charade. The panties, as soft and silky as they were, ceased to be forbidden objects of pleasure and were now little more than ordinary underwear. Very nice underwear to be sure, but nothing really special. Jack decided to see if he could push the envelope of credibility a little further. Jack, have you seen my rose-colored camisole top? Stacy asked a few days later. Jack managed to look guilty without trying too hard. Uh, it's in the wash, honey. In the wash? How did it get there? Stacy asked, astonished. She hadn't worn the garment in nearly two weeks and now, just when she wanted to wear it, it was in the wash. Jack allowed his expression to look a little guiltier. Stacy saw the look and correctly interpreted it. Oh, no, Jack. Don't tell me that you've been wearing it too. Jack looked down at the floor and nodded, looking embarrassed. Stacy sat down on the edge of the bed and regarded her husband for a few seconds. It's getting worse, isn't it? Jack looked up at Stacy and nodded again, a carefully practiced expression of anguish on his face. Oh, Jack, I'm so sorry, Stacy sighed heavily and shook her head. There was nothing more to say. The next afternoon, Stacy replaced all of Jack's undershirts with soft camisoles that matched or complemented the panties she had previously bought. Once again, Jack was in seventh heaven. The combination of the camisoles and panties had rekindled the old familiar thrill. For a month or so, it took two pair of women's pajamas, a negligee, a garter belt, three pair of stockings and a half dozen pair of nude control top pantyhose before he would feel it again. Jack, I don't understand it. You've watched the Super Bowl every year since I've known you. Now, all of a sudden you couldn't care less. What's the problem? Stacy asked Jack from across the kitchen table. It was late Super Bowl Sunday several hours before the start of the game and they were still in their nightgowns and robes eating a light breakfast. I bought a couple of six packs of your favorite beer and about ten pounds of your favorite snack foods. And now you're telling me you'd rather go to a movie? Jack looked up from the bowl of cereal he was eating. I think that's what I suggested. I'm sorry honey. I don't know why, but I'm just not interested in the game this year. Maybe it's because the teams playing aren't all that good. Not that good? Jack, I've been here when the two worst teams in the nation played the worst Super Bowl game in history. I could have done a fan dance wearing nothing more than a G-string in front of the television and you wouldn't have noticed. Jack shrugged and looked away, obviously not the least interested. Stacy sighed when it became apparent that she wouldn't have the opportunity to watch the game either. While not as great of a fan as Jack was, Stacy enjoyed watching the Super Bowl herself and not just because of the commercials either. She was really disappointed when Jack had said he didn't want to watch the game. A few months more passed. It was just after breakfast on Memorial Day. Both Stacy and Jack were still in their nightgowns, enjoying a quiet and leisurely breakfast before going downtown to watch the big parade. Stacy put her empty coffee cup in the saucer, sighed then rose and started to remove the dirty dishes from the table. Jack got up and started to run water in the sink to wash the dishes. Stacy may not have completely approved of Jack's strange obsession about wearing women's garments, but she did approve of his change of attitude about helping around the house. It was refreshing not having to do everything herself. As she stepped toward the sink with the stack of dirty dishes, a fork slipped off the plates and fell to the floor. Stacy set the dishes on the counter and bent over to pick up the fork. Her position was only inches away from Jack's legs and she couldn't help glancing at her husband's legs sticking out from under his knee-length gown. Hey, what are you doing? Jack asked as Stacy pulled the back of Jack's nightgown up to mid-thigh. What happened to the hair on your legs? Stacy asked flatly. What do you mean? Jack asked as he twisted around to look for himself. Jack's mouth dropped open as he stared dumbfounded at his bare legs. 
While Jack was not particularly hirsute to begin with, he had considerably more hair on his legs than what he saw now. I haven't got the slightest idea, Jack said bewildered. I mean, I haven't shaved my legs or anything. I can see that. You still have some hair, Stacy looked at both legs and made an estimate of what remained. But only about a third of what you had before. Only a third? But how? Before I answer that, let me look at the front of you, Stacy said pulling the nightgown up to Jack's waist. Stacy stared at Jack's exposed groin for a moment before shaking her head and releasing her grip on the hem of the nightgown. Wah, what did you see? Jack had been too frightened to look for himself. Well, if I had only the hair on your body to determine your sex, I'd say that you were a girl. What? Jack jerked the nightgown up and peered down at his groin. True enough, the pattern of his pubic hair had changed, going from a dark brown male diamond to a tiny flat top triangle that closely resembled Stacy's. The capsule. Jack asked, shaken by what he had seen. That would be my guess, Stacy confirmed. She looked searchingly at her husband for a second. Maybe we'd better check the rest of you out. The dishes can wait. A minute later, they were both in their bedroom standing in front of the mirrored doors to their closet. Strip, Stacy commanded. Jack slowly untied the fabric belt of his robe. A shrug of his shoulders and the garment fell to the floor. All of it. Jack pulled the nightgown over his head and tossed it on the bed. For some strange unexplainable reason he could not bring himself to look at his naked body in the mirror. He responded to Stacy's commands of turn around and lift up your arms with his eyes tightly closed. He squeezed them tighter together when a calm-sounding Stacy remarked that wasn't really sure but it looked as though his butt was a little larger than it used to be. He popped them open only when he felt Stacy's fingertip on his chest. Glancing down he watched in sick fascination as Stacy silently prodded the area around one of his nipples. Her firm touch on the surprisingly sensitive area seemed to bother him, but he wasn't quite sure how or why. What are you doing? Stacy's intense stare merely flickered to Jack's eyes, then back down to his chest. She prodded the other nipple for a second before she answered Jack's question. Just checking to see if there are other developments in addition to the weight gain in your tush and thighs. Other developments? Jack asked, his voice sounding as weak as he felt. What other developments are you talking about? Are you sure you really want to know? Jack shook his head, then nodded hesitantly. I was checking to see if you were growing boobs, dear. Stacy smiled as though she just heard a very bad joke. Jack looked at her expectantly, still refusing to look at himself in the mirror. And? And I think you are. For the first time since he'd removed his nightgown and robe, Jack's eyes shot to the mirror. At first he didn't see anything wrong with his chest. Then he looked a little closer. He could have been imagining it, but it did appear as if his nipples were a little larger, plumper and darker in color. They were semi-erect and sitting proudly in the center of definitely larger, darker and slightly puffy orioles. What does this mean? A stunned Jack asked his wife. Stacy had slight smile on her face. It means, dear, that in about three or four months, if you continue to develop as you have been, I'll have to buy you some training bras and start calling you Jackie. Stacy said, seemingly bemused by her husband's reaction. But I don't want tits. I'm a man, god damn it. I can't have tits. Jack cried in dismay. Jackie dear, don't knock em until you've tried them. They can be a real joy sometimes, Stacy said in an obvious attempt to console her distraught husband. Yeah, and the rest of the time they would be a little hard to explain. No thanks. I won't do it. Stacy looked thoughtful at her husband's bare chest. I'm not so sure that you'll have any choice in the matter, dear. They look like they're off to a good start, nearly in a would be my guess. Jack looked down at his chest again and shuddered. He was growing breasts. All because he had stupidly swallowed that damned pink capsule. What had started as a ruse to allow him to wear panties, now appeared to have some very real and unintended consequences. The capsules. Maybe if he took one of the blue ones he could reverse, or at least slow down whatever it was that was changing his body into a girl's. 
Stark naked, he stepped to his dresser where the antique rosewood cigar box had lain untouched since Christmas. He and quickly opened it, removed one of the blue capsules, and popped it into his mouth. He grimaced as he swallowed the capsule dry. Jack! What are you doing? An alarmed Stacy asked. Trying to stop these insane changes, Jack cried in distress. He fell on the bed and curled up in a ball. A few seconds later he began sob in frustration. Oh, honey, don't cry, Stacy sat down beside her husband. I know this has been difficult for you, but everything will be okay, I promise you. Jack lifted his head up and stared at his wife, everything will be okay. How? With me being forced to live as a girl? Would that be so bad? Stacy asked, softly. Jack stared incredulously at his wife for a second before burying his face in the bedspread again. Yes, he said between renewed sobs. Jack, listen to me, no matter what happens to you, I'll still love you, Stacy said as she began to stroke Jack's soft back. Even the texture of his skin had changed. In fact, I think I kind of like you all soft and cuddly like this. You do? Jack turned over, sniffed and stared up at his wife. Even if I grow breasts like you think I will? Even if they grow to be large as mine, darling, Stacy said gently. I know that once you're used to them, you're going to just love having them. I know I'll love to play with them. Just like you do with mine. Stacy added with a wink. Jack shook his head in dismay. No, he cried. Jack, let me at least try to show you what it will be like. Moving slowly, Stacy bent over and took one of Jack's budding nipples in her mouth. Jack's body tensed as her tongue touched the unexpectedly sensitive nub. Jack had been astonished by the sensitivity of his tiny breast buds. Stacy's manipulation had quickly brought him erect and he'd had an orgasm such as he'd never experienced before. Exhausted from the orgasm and the stress of the discovery of his expanding breasts, Jack fell asleep almost instantly afterwards. Stacy, however, remained awake staring at the ceiling of their bedroom for a few minutes longer. It is absolutely amazing, she thought, I give Jack some fake aphrodisiac pills filled with powdered sugar and baking soda as a gag gift. He takes pink one, then pulls that crap about it making him wear my panties. The capsule made me do it. Ha! Huh. Hasn't he ever heard of placebos? The underscore only underscore difference between the pink and blue capsules was the color. I'm glad I caught onto what he was doing the first time he raided my lingerie drawer. What he doesn't know is that his mother and I had a very interesting talk before I married him. It was awfully nice of her to share his secret with me. To think he's been wearing panties since he was 10 years old and didn't want me, his own wife, to know. Even if his mother hadn't said anything, I would have known something wasn't right when he subconsciously pushed his balls up inside his abdomen and tucked his penis between his legs right from the start of all this. A surefire tell he'd been doing this for years if I ever saw one. Not that I really mind him wearing panties, it was keeping a secret like that from me that really pissed me off. He was practically begging me to teach him a lesson about trying to fool me. I decided the best way was to play upon his own fetish of wearing panties do it. Nothing placebo about the estrogen and testosterone blocking hormones I've been slipping in his morning coffee since New Year's, though. It's absolutely amazing what you can find on the internet. I should stop giving them to him pretty soon, otherwise he'll have breasts for real and won't be any good in bed if the warning about the danger of permanent castration is true. Still, the thought of him having breasts of his own and wearing a bra is kind of exciting and sexy. Kinky, but oh so sexy. It certainly would solve the problem of what to get him for his birthday and next Christmas. Just some really sexy panties and bra sets should be enough. Lots of lace and satin. Yummy. But do I want Jack to lose the ability to perform in bed? I'll have to make a decision soon, his testicles are starting to feel a little smaller and decidedly spongy. And his semen is getting a little watery, two of the early signs of castration. Castrated. Hmm. Let's think about this logically. The negative of castrating Jack is, of course, that he would continue to lose interest in having intercourse and eventually he would be unable to even have an erection. 
even that possibility had some positive benefits, no more sleeping in a wet spot or worrying about becoming pregnant and oral sex can be as, if not more, satisfying at times. Best of all, here's the subtle changes in Jack's personality, he's much more gentle and considerate and he's really taking his time in ensuring that I'm satisfied, which I absolutely love. Castrating Jack chemically would be painless and quite easy to do, really. Just continue to give him his hormones, easy peasy. It wouldn't be all that bad, would it? No, I'll have to stop soon, otherwise it will be as exciting around here as sleeping with another woman for God's sake. Another woman. Now that I think about it, I've always wanted to try a lesbian relationship. Sleeping with another woman, hmm. No, not just another woman. Jackie. Inside she'd still be my beloved husband and soul mate. A sudden, terribly exciting and wicked thought crossed her mind. I've been feeding him hormones for about five and a half months now. Although Jax is already showing early signs of castration, he seems to be otherwise tolerating them quite well. I guess it won't really hurt Jack to keep giving them to him for a while longer, say until next Christmas. That's only about six more months, what would be the harm in that? She smiled up into the darkness, envisioning Jack's developing breasts and shrinking testicles for a few minutes longer, then being satisfied with her decision, rolled over to go to sleep. Placebos indeed.